Greetings. My name is Martha Holden. I am a member of the Spark of Humanity Network. Welcome to Living Mosaic. Living Mosaic is a project of the Spark of Humanity Network aimed to explore and perhaps expand, and I extend the idea, the notion that there is a solution to the pain, the causes of the pain. All the agony we see around us in this planet and around this planet, all the human, geophysical, political, social, theological, what, you know, the pain of humanity, the pain of the planet, and that there is a solution to this, and that we are each an essential part of the solution, and we are each a unique part of the solution. We're envisioning the solution as like a living, evolving mosaic. And we're, we're not designing it. If we prefer to see it as a dance rather than a mosaic, we're not choreographing it. We don't know what it looks like. We can't quantify it or qualify it or categorize it. But there is a solution, and we are each an essential bit of it. If we're seeing it as a mosaic, a pebble, a bit of broken glass, a bit of colored glass, a gem, a shell, we're each a bit, a unique piece of this living mosaic. So how do we live into that ourselves? How do we explore that to see whether it fits with us, whether we feel it's true, whether it's something we want to work with and develop within ourselves and with our own habits and practices, and how we support others in seeing that too to help, to help abate the fear, the terror, for many the denial, it's too big, I can't look at it, I can't stand it, I think I'll go play tiddlywinks or whatever we do um, to distract ourselves from being part of the solution. Or just the despair, I think I'll stay in bed and put my pillows over my head and just suck my thumb and whimper or whatever. But there, there is a solution. And what those of us who are engaged in this project are finding is that as we just hold the idea that there is a solution and that we are, that we may be, we can be parts of it. I mean, the basic premise is that we are each an essential and unique part of it. So, but as we begin to explore that, what we find is that there's less tendency to denial. There's still some because it's so painful. The reality is so painful. We can't look at the whole thing all at once. But the feeling that there is a solution and that, that we can contribute to that, or if this feels better for us, that we, it needs us. We need to participate. We need to become part of the solution. We are part of the solution, just, just that. We are unique. And so discovering our uniqueness, letting life, our thoughts, our prayers, if we're so inclined, sort of hone us down, shape us into who we need to be, the person we need to be, the unique person we need to be. Can't be them, can't be them, they can't be us. We're each unique and we're each essential letting that process take us and draw us toward our niche within the mosaic or our figure within the dance, the ever-evolving, multidimensional, perhaps n-dimensional dance. So this is the process of this program, and I'm glad you're here. The 
topic today, the subject is trouble. No, that was last time, is work. Work. Now, this came about as a topic for conversation, and you're welcome to zoom in or call in whenever you're inclined to comment or question. Um, and if you're seeing this on YouTube and not live, um, you can email us at livingmosaic2024 at gmail.com. And if you want to get on our mailing list. Anyway, the, did I lose myself? Work. This came about as a topic for discussion because of a dear friend of mine. I talk to her regularly and deeply. And towards the end of one of our conversations, we generally try to limit it to about an hour, <clears throat> she, and I was telling her about this and how much fun I'm having with this and how much good it seems to be doing me. I don't know how it's affecting you or others. Um, she said, you have found your work. You're doing your work. I, I don't have my work. I don't know what my work is. I'm uh, sort of at loose ends. This is a woman with a couple of advanced degrees and a couple of meaningful careers behind her, but she not feeling that she has that place of engagement in the solution. She, that it's not defined. I, in living mosaic terms, I'd say she hasn't found her place in the niche, her niche in the mosaic. And as I was thinking about it, as our conversation came towards its end, I thought, she's got a husband, she's got children, she's got grandchildren, She's part of a community, several overlapping communities in her geographical community. What does she mean? You know, what's, what's work likely to be under those circumstances? And that got me pondering about that and thinking this would be worth taking up, indulging the orca blessing of being here. Um, to talk about. There's work that's the nine to five, five days a week, or you know, eight to four, whatever, job, job, job work. And I have having been there myself, I know there's there are many times I don't I don't like this job. I this does not feel like my work. I don't know what I'm doing here. I can't wait for the next opportunity to get along. I'm you know, whatever. That sort of work as job, and that's not the dead end sometimes it feels like it is. I had, having had conversations with a couple more friends in the last day or two, um, if we're trying on the idea that there is, we are each part of the living mosaic, this living mosaic, and that is based, our, at least the way I best understand it, is that is most easily, or it's easily, fluently based on the principles of the spark of humanity network, that there is a spark of humanity in each one of us, and that it can't be destroyed or corrupted, and that <clears throat> as we connect with our spark, and through it connect to and affirm the spark in another, that changes things. It, it seems to strengthen their spark and our spark, and it seems that the strengthened spark acts to erode our defenses and clarify our bafflement and release our distortions. Now, this may not sound like anything we want to have happen. Our defenses have been well built for good cause, but to find our place in the mosaic, to be drawn toward where we truly belong, where we know we're most at home, where we are engaged as part of the solution, it requires that we're willing to maybe let go of some of our defenses and maybe have some of our bafflement clarified and release some of our distortions. Distortions that we've developed 
because of our fear and our pain and the challenges, our desire to survive. But these can all be getting in the way of our being drawn into our niche in the mosaic. So that really, in the larger sense of work, that that is the work. It's retooling ourselves. It's trying out bit by bit. Because what I've found is just doing a little bit of this work, the, the spark of humanity work, approach or just the straight living mosaic doing it sort of from the head and gut of there is a solution and I want to be and I am an essential part of it and so how do I get there how do I get how do I get on the trolley tracks that are leading me from who I am where I am now to my place within the mosaic or how do I get on the zip line that'll take me there and that's, that is work, letting go of being coming, willing to let go of, willing to be transformed, as we say in the Spark literature, willing to be transformed so that we may become uh, um, available to alignment, that will draw us into our place within the mosaic or closer to it. Because the mosaic is living and evolving. And so we need to be staying awake and paying attention. And knowing that we're we're just we're we need to be the tra trolley tracks don't end there. The zip line doesn't end. It just gets us into a place that continues to call us to be formed and molded and explored as well as exploring and expanded as well as expanding. So it's a so it's an inner process of just noticing our habits of thought, our habits of response, and being willing to change them. It's a habits thing. Um, and noticing, perhaps, our distractions, how we choose to be distracted. I was talking with a friend the other day. It was a beautiful day. We were outdoors sitting on the bench on State Street in downtown Montpelier. And she talked about, you know, first thing when she wakes up in the morning, she turns on the radio. Some people probably go to their phones or turn on the TV and how what a bummer that is compared to how it was X number of years or decades ago and I can't help but wonder why why do we choose to distract ourselves I need to know do we really need to know is it really important I was in a group that was that met together for many years, every two weeks, I think it was. Um, and we were meeting on Zoom at this point, except I was meeting by telephone, because that's my nature. And it was January 6th of 2023, I think, when there was the difficulties in the national capital the insurrection. And I called a friend, so are you coming? No, I can't. I've got to watch history. I said, and I wondered, and later he, he agreed that, you know, that desire to know what's going on. We, we can't know everything that's going on. We don't know everything that's going on. And if we knew I think that if we knew what everything was going on, our circuits would be overloaded and we'd explode. So the question always, I think, that we can come back to is, OK, I'm aware there's a problem. I don't need to know all the details. There's a crisis. Things are painful. Things are heartbreakingly painful. I don't need to know all the details. I certainly don't need to decide who's to blame and who's at fault and who's responsible. 
Well, I need to recognize that there is a solution and that I am being called to be a part of the solution. And the solution calls me because I'm an essential part of the solution. And what I find is that if when I start making the smallest steps in this area, little tiny, tiny baby steps, tentative little baby steps, that there's some hope begins to flicker and burst into flame within me. That so really, actually, whether I ever find my niche in this solution or feel that I've found my niche in the mosaic, um, just the relief of getting out from under the denial and the despair and the often addictive tendency to distract myself, to not be present to myself, to my feelings, to my perceptions, to actually to my gifts, because we each have gifts. We're each unique. We have unique gifts. And when they're in the right place in the mosaic, then things begin to click into place and begin to move, and the solution begins to be felt. It begins to be active. I'm doing that a lot today, aren't I? I'm sort of starting a sentence, and who knows where it's going to. But that, that feeling of engagement, being engaged in the solution, no matter how small and weak it feels, is, allows for hope. That, that itself is worth the price of admission, right? Um, because to be out from under that blanket of despair and denial and reaching for the next distraction, whatever it might be. You know, as I said, there a lot, many of them are potentially addictive. Um, and is that, that's not part of the solution, being distracted. So being aware of that and practicing, developing our own practice. I mean, we can offer some ideas, but you know, we each are unique. And so developing our own practice of noticing when we're wanting to distract ourselves and seeing how we can move that. What can we focus on instead? What can we, okay, I'm not going to distract myself. I'm going to, you know, do this. I'll, or I'll do a lesser, um, a lesser toxic or dangerous or potentially addictive means of distraction. I'll go for a walk in the woods. I'll go for a swim once the water's cleaned up. I'll, you know, pat the cat. I'll maybe clean out the refrigerator. But it's but that's self-generated, or it's you know from within ourselves within our own system. It's not turning on to look for, you know, another channel, another you know another YouTube video. Another, it's it's a lot, becoming grounded within ourselves because it's actually that force, that healing, desiring, calling force, energy, whatever that is wanting to draw us into the solution. It's only our true selves. That force is not really attracted to our distractions. And so beginning to maybe putting words on it, but I usually don't dare put it, putting words on my true self, but just being willing to let go of the extraneous things so that I am more available to that which is wants to draw me into the mosaic, into where I belong in the dance or in the mosaic. It's It, or it's an alignment. A friend used the word alignment. And I think it's a good word. And if we can feel there's something to get aligned with, sort of like a, a 
plumb bob. You know, let me get aligned with that. That true. That corner of that house is true. If we get true, that's a good. That's one one way to see it. I think that I'm kinesthetic, sort of visual. Um, different people need to work these things around to find their own images or thoughts or whatever can help you become amenable to being moved. But as the friend said, alignment, and I thought, ah, trolley tracks. From here to where I where I need to be in the mosaic, where the solution where the solution is calling me to be, to lodge. So I've run out of steam for the moment. And so I will be silent, invite you to join me in prayer or whatever you do. And then I'm sure something will come up and I'll take off again. But for the moment, let's just be and see how we can work at this. Oh, yes, another facet of the work. Um, besides within ourselves, and the outside and the inside do now intermesh, they're connected. Um, after my conversation with my friend who turns on the radio first thing in the morning, and I said, well, I, you know, I like to think there's, I like to think, I do think that there is a solution and that we're each an essential and unique part of it. And so I just mentioned that to her. I did not pound it into her, but I just sort of, this is what works for me. And she was quite taken with the idea. I don't know what she'll do about it or where she'll go with it. And then the next morning, I, a friend came over, and he was in a, you know, ain't it awful grumble. And, you know, we get that so, they can be so attractive and gather people around us who are into their ain't it awful grumbles, and we can all feed off each other's ain't it awful grumbles. Um, and maybe we can agree whose fault it is. Um, or maybe we can just get angry together. Yeah, yeah, I, rrr, rrr, yes. Um, it, I think, for me, I know, part of the work is saying, well, you know, I've come to think there's a solution. And that we're each an essential and unique part of it. So rather than, I don't say this rather than grumbling, I, say, I, I find that that makes my life, I like life better when I realize that I'm a unique and essential part of the solution. And so to consider how I might find out what that part, to discover that part within myself that's unique and essential, to be willing to do that for the good of the planet for just and for my own joy and comfort. I don't, I, I'm much gentler than that. But to be able to bring this concept into conversations, you know, how many conversations this past week you've had that were just grumble grumbles? Um, and you may have enjoyed them very much, but you can make a different choice. And in a way, they just, in my mind, they just, at least for me, they just dig the hole deeper. And it gets stickier and stinkier as it goes down. So might consider that as part of the work, just gently suggesting the alternative to the people you run into. So thank you for joining me. You are invited to, encouraged to, um, like us on Facebook or do whatever one does on Facebook for enterprises such as this and to get in touch with us by the email I just gave you um, and to be grateful for the good people here at Orca and the other people who are involved, the iceberg of which I'm merely the tip. So thank you for joining us and have a lovely until next time. Take care. <laughs>